Hi, it's just me today, my other partner couldn't be here today. Um, but I'm going to talk to you about PillBank, which is an initiative to improve drug disposal and recycling in the UK. So currently over £300 million worth of drugs are wasted each year because they are unused or expired. Um, out of the 300 million, a quarter of that is um, just unused medication in people's homes. Uh, 50 million pounds is a, about is unused medication in care homes and nursing homes, and the other 100 million is drugs that are actually returned back to the pharmacy. So currently, there's a lack of awareness of safe disposal mechanisms for um, like unused and expired drugs. And we want to increase education about this because um, drugs that are disposed of um, even like down the sink or the drain or um, just in the normal um, waste at home, or general waste, can pollute the soil and waterways as well. Additionally, stockpiling of drugs can lead to unused and expired drugs being taken by children, which is quite unsafe. So our pro approach is a three-pronged approach. So. Um, via safe disposal, for example, safe disposal boxes in pharmacies and GPs, um, educating, ed education, so via um, social media campaigns to let the general public know why they should, um, why they sh should dispose of their drugs um, in the correct manner, and also potentially reusing medications that aren't expired and are with, um, that meet the certain criteria. So the process would be a patient would drop off their unused drugs at their local pillbox. So it would be a provider, so a GP or pharmacy or hospital. Um, this would then be sorted. So the drugs that can be reused could, um, could be sent off to be recycled. And drugs that don't meet that certain criteria, so for example, they're expired, um, would be disposed of safely instead of going into like, the waterways or the soil. So this is like an AI image of what it could look like. So something that's recognizable to everyone, for example, like a post office box, everyone knows like to look for the red box. So for example, in GPs and pharmacies, you could have like a big blue box that everyone knows to dispose of their drugs there. Um, there could be cash or tax incentives for pharmacies to provide these. And also we have data-driven placement and delivery based on needs. So for example, um, elderly people, people who have, um, who generally have like carers come over to their houses, they probably wouldn't be able to access this if they're, for example, not, not able to um, mo mobilize. So also methods for picking up um, drugs from people's homes as well if necessary. And um, also we have maps for pill back locations. In terms of education campaigns, so educating via, for example, social media, so on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, to let people know why they should um, have like safe disposal method, um, methods, basically, and also just statements on prescription stickers and boxes, so they know how to actually um, dispose of their medication. Um, so currently across Europe there are multiple drug disposal campaigns that are quite successful, particularly in like Spain and Portugal. So in Spain they have over 22,000 pharmacies that participate um, and that leads to over 4,700 tons of unused or expired medication being safely disposed of. And similarly in Portugal they have similar um, systems as well. So. For example, we wanted to also um, look into reusing drugs that weren't expired, but there are some main concerns about the quality of the drugs. Um, currently, you would be unable to determine how drugs were stored, and there'd be concerns surrounding liability if reused drugs, uh, for example, cause side, um, well, side effects. Um, so there would be necessary criteria, so for example, be like an untampered seal, uh, it wouldn't be a controlled drug um, at least three months until they're expired and be stored um, like in a normal ambient temperature. Um, so currently there are US, so there are drug recycling initiatives or reusing initiatives across the world, so particularly in the US <coughs> and Greece, and now recently in the Netherlands, it was one that's started up, and that's helped to um, basically reuse drugs instead of them being thrown away. Um, so this is an example in Greece as well. So I think like nearly six million worth of euros in donated value of some of the medication. Um, that 
There have been certain instances where this has happened in the UK, so during the pandemic, and also the influenza in 2008, but in more controlled um, settings, so in a care home or nursing home instead of in the general public. Um, I don't know how much time I have left. Okay. <laughs> You. Okay, any questions for Bill Bank? Well done, really good presentation. Um, it's a good initiative, and how do you envision getting people to actually recycle? So if I'm 85 and I've got this leftover box, but the option is to throw it in my bin, which takes two seconds, you know, take it down to the pharmacy and throw it in this identified box. How, do you, how, how would you incentivize me other than educating me? I think it's important for the planet. I've seen 20 years. Okay. That's, that's well. okay. Um, so, for example, for certain um, age demographics, some of them get their medication dropped off to them. So, there's a way where once they get their medication dropped off, it, um, other unused medication could be picked up. That would be more of a seamless um, like system for them because it's already a system in place. So, you just kind of already have the mechanism to. Transport already established, basically. So that way, they wouldn't necessarily need more um, like incentives because the system's already in place. Okay. Lily111, you're next. So, if you get yourselves ready. Do we have a second question from uh, panel members? Any questions? Yeah. Anyone, audience? Yeah. Can you do a pass the, a pass the parcel on the mic back to the back row? Like for drug recycling, um, because we know that some medications that are very sensitive to lights and also temperature as well. So how do you make sure that actually they actually comply? The patients actually comply with the storage conditions in which the medication is actually safe to be used for other patients. Okay, so currently in some countries they have certain initiatives, so they have like pharmacy stickers or temperature control stickers on the medication, so it lets people know like um, what temperature the drug's been stored at. Um, otherwise, um, you have to go on trust, which obviously isn't ideal, as opposed to um, those other mechanisms yeah, for certain drugs, yeah. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much.